actually Hebrew speaking, Hebrew. Yeah. As a book coming as a Hebrew. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Let's say I would like to be a Hebrew today. Yeah. And uh, I read Hebrew and then understand anything. Okay. Is this fair for me? Yeah, okay. So Hebrew prayer. We would say Shema Israel Adonai Elohim Adonai Ehad. Shema Israel means here, O Israel. Adonai Elohim, your Lord is God. Adonai Ehad, your Lord is one. Okay. If I say it now in English, not in Hebrew, 100% acceptable. I'm a very good Hebrew. I'm a very good Jew. Okay. I can say it in Hebrew if I want to, but I don't have to say it in Hebrew. Yeah. Okay? But in Islam, no, I cannot say that. It must be in Arabic. It must be in Arabic. It must be in Arabic. So that's the point here. Yeah, but I think we don't have the answer. Yeah, Somebody else might. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't have the answer. But yeah. I feel like it's, you can keep it, you know, when you... When you speak with your language, you will change the meaning by time. This is my exactly. opinion. But why should you have this privilege? Like, but you have your own language when you ask the God for anything. Yeah. Like a Pakistani, when they ask the God for something. When you want to speak to the God, you have your language. So if it's, if it's to be language. fair, if it's to be fair... But for praying, it's beautiful. formal, like a formal. Beautiful. It's if, if, if it's to be... If it's to be fair, then I would bring the religion in a new language altogether to all humanity. And if you want to learn the religion, you learn the language of the religion. But some people are born with it. No, I'm not sure. Why? Like, what did you do to become an Arab? You didn't do anything. You just Islam. found yourself as an Arab. Islam 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? Islam 2.0. Yeah. I think there's a point here. Um, the only disadvantage comes only in Quran and prayer. Mm -hmm. But everything else in the religion yeah. is trans translatable and it is acceptable in different languages. It's mm -hmm. only Quran and prayer. That's it. Everything else but is But this is the core. This is the core. The center. Yes, it is the core. Yeah. Of, this is the center yeah. of, of the religion. And it's according to classic Muslim belief Prayer is the backbone of religion. Yeah. Okay? It's the pillar of religion. If you demolish that pillar, you demolish the whole religion. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this pillar is based on a language, a specific language that some people have an advantage of, mm -hmm. of it. Now, the next question, and we can always go back to this always, <laughs> okay. but I just want to open the others. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, looking at this, and here I'm not talking only about Islam, I'm talking about all religion. Yeah. Yeah. According to the classic belief, classic belief, you might have your own different interpretation, but according to the classic belief, only people who believe in my religion will be admitted to paradise or to heaven or to the yeah. eternal yeah. world or to the kingdom That's of God. So. Okay. So let's just assume, for the sake of present, the presentation, that Christianity is the correct religion. Let's assume that. Uh, why did I choose Christianity? Because it has the biggest percentage. And again, let's assume that all Christians agree together, which is not the fact, actually. Many Christians think that others are not saved by Christ. Okay, so the question here is this. Muslims say that God is most merciful. Christians say that God is love. Hmm. So a merciful God, a loving God. But at the same time, this God, this loving God, this merciful God, the maximum, which is not true, he will be saving just one third of his creations and two thirds will burn eternally in hell. So what kind of mercy or love is this? Seriously. Yeah, what kind of mercy or love is this? So he created his creations, and he's just saving one third, which is not the fact, actually, because this third is not, they don't agree. In reality, actually, the people who will be saved is no more than 5%. It's no more than 95% will rot in hell eternally. Yeah, yeah not, for one, for, not for one day, not for one year, not for one century, not for one millennia. They will rot in hell eternally. So what kind of mercy or love is this? Okay, I think I might have a little bit of a bullshit answer. Sure. Okay, so um, here, it's, it's not true that, that God will uh, throw everybody in hell. So, supposedly, God is going to forgive 
any sin, if you repent, repent mm -hmm. except one sin only. Okay. Which is worshipping somebody with him. Okay. Or sharing worship with somebody with him. Okay. So now, uh, that means he's telling us, I know you're human, I know you're, you're weak, I know you're inexperienced and not, not logical, knowledgeable, and I would forgive everything, mm -hmm. but I would not forgive you worshipping somebody else other than me. Which means how many percent again of people are, are rotting great, in hell? Yeah. Great, great. But, because I'm merciful and because I'm God, I'm going to give you things that you have to use mm -hmm. to know what's truth, what's false. Okay. So he gave us the free will. Okay. We can choose whatever we want. Yeah. He gave us the brain, so we are sane. Beautiful. Yeah. And we know that the world has different religions. Everybody yeah. knows that. Yeah. Now I think it's every person's responsibility mm -hmm. is to find the right path to God. Absolutely. Because yeah, He gave us the free will. He gave us the ability, the brain, and at the same time, he gave us the knowledge. Yeah. The knowledge 